Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I want to share with you a story I've been thinking about this weekend. Many times we're fixed in our perspective on things. And because of that, because we don't have any outside perspective, we uh, can't find simple solutions. And I want to tell you a story from my dad growing up and how that related to the consulting work that I do still to this day. So uh, growing up, my dad was a pastor. Uh, he and my mom started a small church when I was just little, maybe four or five years old. And uh, my dad at the time was a bus driver. My mom worked part-time at JCPenney seasonally. And uh, then my dad got a job in the dairy industry that he always liked and wanted to be involved in from the time he graduated high school. He got a job working in a plant. And uh, after a period of time, probably when I was about 13 or 14 years old, he was promoted into a sales leadership role. Um, and there was a very unique problem at that time. Now, this would have been uh, the 1980s, late 1980s, where maybe early 1980s even, where uh, milk crates, plastic milk crates that sat behind supermarkets that they used to deliver the milk in became something that were being widely stolen. If you were in college at the time, it was the prize to obtain uh, stealing these plastic milk crates from behind supermarkets and using them to build bed frames and furnitures and couches. And if you don't remember these things, they were about yay big and they were really hard plastic. They were very, very sturdy. You could stand on them. You could jump on them. They, they wouldn't really break. And, and this was a problem because they were very costly to produce. And uh, you couldn't really ask your customer to reimburse you for them. See, you would drop off all of these plastic milk crates full of milk at a supermarket. They would stock their shelves with these. And then they would put them out back for our trucks to come back and pick them back up. But in that gap, in the interim, usually overnight, many of the milk crates would disappear, if not all of them. So this became a real challenge for the industry. And my dad, just recently being promoted into sales, was asked how he thought they might be able to resolve this problem. Well, again, my dad was a pastor. So my dad looked at this as a moral issue, not one of business. And his suggestion, which turned out to be uh, very beneficial, was that when they remade the milk crates next time to put the name of the dairy as they would with the contact information, and then directly below that in large letters, put the words, thou shalt not steal. Now, you would think that maybe just adding these words to the milk crate aren't going to do very much, but my father convinced management that this was the right thing to do, and they did. They produced a large quantity of milk crates that were different from all of their other ones in only one way, and that was they had the words, thou shalt not steal on the side of it. Oddly enough, this dramatically decreased the number that were being stolen from their dairy. What do I mean by that? Well, they had video evidence uh, of people going behind supermarkets late at night and uh, loading up their trucks with plastic milk crates and sorting out and leaving behind those that had the words thou shalt not steal on them. See, I think people thought they were free, they were easy pickings, but when those words were right there in front of them, all of a sudden they felt this moral reprehension and they decided to leave those behind. Uh, years later, uh, probably close to 20 years later, I was doing some consulting for a nationwide retailer and we were there talking about recycling and sustainability. And one of the challenges that organization had at the time was that biofuel was really popular. Now, biofuel is made from fryer grease, the things that you use to fry French fries and chickens. And this retailer had a lot of it. Uh, they would put it in 55 gallon drums out in the back of the facility. And when biofuel became popular, very quickly they started to find that the contract they had that would pay them for this raw material uh, was not uh, coming up to par. And that was because people were coming in at night with pumps and stealing these 55-gallon drums. They would pump it right out of the drum into a drum that they had in their car or truck bed, and then they would use that to power their car. Uh, you could power a diesel vehicle with biofuel like this. <clears throat> so that became a real issue. Uh, eventually, the retailer decided to put these tanks inside at a very high cost 
They installed tanks inside the building, and then they put a hole through the wall that had a small latch on it that their vendors could pull up to and drop a hose inside the building through that hole and pump it out of the tanks, um, thinking that that would solve the problem. Well, it certainly didn't. Uh, the thieves just changed the way they did things, and they bought pumps, and they got generators, and they filled the backs of their trucks with big tubs, and they just pulled in at night and uh, put it, snaked it right through the wall, and were stealing everything out of their tanks. Now, they couldn't put a lock on these tanks, and they couldn't do that because they had different vendors at different times, and it was a subcontracted. Uh, we were, a, a, the company I was working with knew a broker that was actually brokering this out, so it was always a different delivery person, whoever was the highest bidder at the time. So we couldn't really put a lock on there. So instead, what we had to do was try to find a solution to stop people from stealing. And the solution was my dad's. We got small placards that said, thou shalt not steal. We put those directly below that hole in the wall that went into the oil tank. And very, very quickly, people stopped stealing that oil. So what's the point behind all this? Well, the point is, is that sometimes we need perspective. These are problems that this large nationwide retailer had. They were problems that my father's dairy had. They were problems that were systemic in their industries. And the solution for them was not a typical business solution. The solution required a pastor who knew the Ten Commandments that understood how people think and how they feel and what makes them tick. And he recognized that a large percentage of them had heard these words before, thou shalt not steal. And by just the presence of a sign that said thou shalt not steal, they changed their minds on what they would steal. Now, going back to the milk crates, what I always found interesting is not only did they not steal our milk crates, they actually continued to steal all of our competitors' milk crates, which gave a real competitive advantage to the business that my father was in because it was a problem that his, uh, his competitors had to deal with, but something that he didn't. So sometimes this is called functional fixedness, where we can't see the forest for the trees. We can't see the problem right in front of us and the solution right in front of us because we don't have a tool that will solve that problem. There's an old experiment using functional fixedness where you give somebody a box of matches and a candle and you ask them to affix that candle to a wall. And almost without exception, people will try to light the matches and heat the candle up and get it to stick to the wall. They'll do all sorts of crazy things. Uh, but the real solution is, is just to dump the matches out of the, I'm sorry, there's one other thing to that. You get a thumbtack too. The, 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 the solution is to dump the matches out of the matchbox, pin the box to the wall, and then sit the candle in it. But we don't think about taking the box apart. We look at that box of matches and we say, well, this is one thing. It's a fixed thing. Instead of taking it apart and breaking it down to its components. Sometimes we have to do that psychologically with people as well as we learned when we talk about thou shalt not steal. So this is a story of how plastic milk crates and a pastor intersected to send a lot of kids to hell. All right, until next time. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the process fix to help you see the bigger picture. Derek names is the elixir, cut and waste away like scissor. Woo! Got a problem, he can solve it. He's an expert with the process. So for sure you'll see a profit, bottom line profit. Analyze the work your people doing every day. Expose the inefficiencies getting in the way. Advise you how to automate, outsource, abbreviate, eliminate, innovate. Now there's more food up on your dinner plate.